Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of the Marist Maid series. My name is Scott Day, and joining with me today is Jeff Brault, 2008 Marist alum. You may notice Jeff's voice from Marist athletic events as he covers our women's basketball team and football team over the radio. He also is the host of ESPN The Classroom, which airs Saturdays from 10 a.m. till noon. Jeff, besides his radio profession, also holds a current position as a brand and digital strategist for the Mid-Hudson Region Hospital. Jeff, welcome. Thanks, Scott. Glad to be here. Thanks, thanks for being on, Jeff. Thanks for uh, taking your time out of your busy schedule to meet with us today. Oh, my but, pleasure. Happy to do it. But uh, let's start here first. Um, just kind of talk about your time as a student here at Marist. What was your major and what kind of organ organizations you were involved with? I was here from 2004 to 2008, uh, and I was a communications major. Uh, Marist, when I came to school here, had just a few years prior started a concentration in sports communication, and that's what initially attracted me to the school. Um, I say me. It wasn't so much me who was initially attracted to it, it was my mom. Um, I was going to go to Syracuse from the time I was a kid. Um, and you know, I went up, I visited, I applied, I got in, I did all that stuff, but I never really loved it. You know, I mean, it's got a, a fantastic reputation, especially for people that want to work in sports media. But you know, I didn't ever really get the feeling like, you know, like I loved it. I felt like I was going there because I should, not because I wanted to. Um, and so, very, very late in the college admissions process, my mom got a postcard from Marist that mentioned the the uh, the sports communication program, and I was so done. With, college, with applying to colleges, with the tours, with everything. And my mom was like, oh, you should go check out Marist. It's only, you know, I went to high school in Connecticut. It was only like an hour and 10 minutes away from where I was living at the time. And uh, I was like, I, I really don't want to. And she was like, what if we went on a weekday and you got to miss school? And I said, I would love to go. <laughs> and so I uh, came to Marist, met with Dr. Key Strudler, who runs the, the sports comm program. Uh, immediately, as soon as I got here, I was like, I love this place. This is everything I want in college. Uh, I think I applied the next day, got in as quickly as, as, as possible after that. And now, you know, like 10 years later, here we are. That's great. Well, I'm sure Marist College is happy your mom. <laughs> force you over here, but more importantly, that you listened to your mom. <laughs> Always listen to your mom, place number one. But um, wh wh why don't you uh, tell us a little bit um, about uh, ESPN in the classroom, sure. kind of go from there. So uh, obviously I went to school under Dr. Mm -hmm. Schroeder, graduating, staying around, we always kind of kept in touch. Uh, before I had my current position at the hospital right across the street from Marist, um, I worked for the Chamber of Commerce here mm -hmm. in Dutchess okay. County, and so I would just get to know, you know everybody in local media. Obviously, you know, with sports media people from working in it, then I would get to know, you know, people on the other side from the business community organizations and events that I would attend. So, uh, Bob DeFelice runs the Fox Radio Outfit. It's not affiliated with Fox News or anything, it's just, it's a separate, independently owned um, radio cluster out of uh, basically New York. And he had just picked up, it's about 2013, he had just picked up an ESPN radio affiliate uh, because the affiliate in New York City, changed frequencies, no longer reached up in the Hudson Valley, they wanted all the way to get this far south, there was a, little, a bit of a vacancy in ESPN's coverage gap, so he picked it up. Um, I had heard about this, I was talking to Bob at an event and just mentioned, hey, you know, Marist has this communication school, wouldn't it be cool if there was a way to get the kids involved in a show or, or whatever? And, and sort of what came out of it is Bob, myself, and, and Dr. Strudler sat down and, you know, the classroom was born. Um, as far as we know, it's the only partnership between an academic school and a commercial affiliate of ESPN Radio anywhere in the nation. We don't think anybody else is doing this. Students are involved in producing all aspects of the show, everything from content to the bumpers that we run between segments to technically producing it, and every week two of them appear on air alongside myself, who hosts, and Dr. Keith Rutherford, who's like our expert on topics, and we bring in guests over the phone usually. Um, such a cool experience to get to do it. Um, to get the students involved in something that I don't care where else you go to college, you're not getting this level of experience. You know, we say all the time, I'm like, look, what you're doing now, it's not for an internship. It's not for student radio. There are people that are putting their money and professional reputation behind this broadcast. So you're doing something that matters to people. Um, and that's pretty cool. It's like the most fun two hours I get to have every week, just, just talking about sports. And it's cool that we don't do um, like we're not doing who should start a quarterback for the Jets, who should play second base for the Mets. You know, we do 
um, sports issues. So a lot of what's going on with the NCAA lawsuit, should they pay players, should they not pay players, you know, at full cost of attendance, all of those things to, you know, when we covered the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight, it wasn't how do you think the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight is going to go, it was how should you feel supporting a fighter who had been convicted in a domestic violence case and been charged so many other times and not convicted, you know, should you feel weird about that? Should you feel okay rooting for a guy who's not maybe the best person outside of his sport? So we do stuff like that. It's a lot of fun, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really glad as an alum to have a part in being able to give the, that property to, to the marriage community. That's great. It sounds like a fun show just on the subject matter, you know, most shows, uh, you get fans calling in and screaming about players, yeah. oh, oh, Tom Brady, he's the worst, and then the next week, Tom Brady's the best quarterback yeah. of all time. It, it sounds um, awarding to kind of run a, a show with a, it is. that kind of subject. It is, and we don't, you know, we don't invite callers, mm -hmm. uh, because our egos are large enough to carry it two hours. <laughs> but, uh, but we don't bring callers in, I mean, but that's it, it's not boring. It's not a two hour academic discussion. I mean, mm -hmm. one, Dr. Struggle and I both go off the rails on I mean, we had one week where we debated who would win in a fight, a minotaur or a centaur. <laughs> and we drilled so down, so, so deep down into it. It's like, but what if it was fought in an urban environment or an open field? And, uh, Home court advantage. Right? Oh, right? <laughs> and a couple weeks ago, uh, we did, we were talking about the upcoming NFL draft. And, and I personally, I don't understand the appeal of watching the NFL draft because there's only two reactions to every pick. It's, oh, wow, they took that guy. Or, oh, wow, they took that guy? So just sort of talking about the draft and its appeal, we, we drafted, if you were repopulating the planet um, and you had to draft animals vis-a-vis -vis Noah and Noah's Ark, what animals would you select? <laughs> so, so we get into some crazy stuff. People say it's funny. I, I don't know. I know we have a good time. Yeah, and I feel like if we have a good time doing it, people are probably having a good time listening to it. And I hope. I think we, we just try to do the best we can. That's great. So, so what about the students? You mentioned you have two students on each, each week. Mm -hmm. Do you have to uh, filter in a couple students, or how many, how many so, kids? So the, the Center for Sports Communication has, it, it varies by semester, but it's like 10 interns mm -hmm. working on various projects, and usually four to five of them are dedicated to our show. So of those four and five, they'll fill the different roles every week. Someone will be on the audio board, someone will do the content, someone will give a, a video. All of the episodes are streamed by American Ed TV, which is kind of an upstart cable network. Um, we're trying to get distribution but available on demand on some Verizon and cable vision systems here in the tri-state area. Um, so they'll run the video switcher for that. Uh, you know, you just sort of mix and match roles every week. It takes, you know, about three to four students outside of Dr. Shaw and myself to run every show. That's great. That's great. Do they, uh, how, the, the students that have worked with you, have any of them moved on in the, in the profession of radio or in sports broadcasting? In broadcasting particularly, you know, the show is so new that just the first group of student interns are going to be graduating this um, this year. Oh, okay. So, because, you know, when we started, we purposely didn't necessarily want seniors involved mm -hmm. because it was so new mm -hmm. and we didn't want to develop everything and then have those seniors mm -hmm. leave in, in three months. We, we tried to target sophomores and juniors for the opportunity because right. they'd be with us for yeah. the first few years. Um, I do know that in terms of internship with some of the pad, we've got a guy who's serious right now, um, NBA TV, uh, one interns at the Marist Athletics Department doing the video and multimedia stuff here. So, you know, they've got some pretty good internships. And, and I mean, we say this on air, they're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Just based on the work that they've done for this property where they're not getting paid, um, if they translate that to their work ethic mm -hmm. as a professional, uh, them getting jobs is not a concern. So they're going to get hired, and I'm excited to see where they go. Great. Well, will you give them an opportunity to have a hands-on experience in their uh, chosen field once they graduate marriage? What kind of hands-on experiences did you have? So when I went to school here, I started doing student television, MCTV, mm -hmm. um, and myself and two friends basically reinvigorated the sports program of WMAR, the student radio station here. When I got to school as a freshman, nobody was doing games, anything. So myself and, and two friends, each were a year older than me, you know, had an interest in broadcasting, had an interest in sports, so we started doing every baseball game, every basketball game. And, and it just got to the point where, you know, we, we sort of became like part of the fabric. You know, you get to know people, you get to know the players, you get to know the coaches, and we just loved the opportunity getting to do it. We couldn't believe that we were able to do this. An entire schedule was just wide open for us. 
And so we started traveling to road games, you know, and not just the ones in like New Rochelle and Bronx, whatever, but we would beg, borrow, and steal for hotel rooms to go to like Richmond, Virginia, and Buffalo. Uh, we went to Florida with Marriage played in the Old Spice Classic back in 2007. Um, so, you know, we, we seized this opportunity that existed. Through that, um, and getting to know the people in the athletics department, we started calling baseball games for the athletics department over GoRedFoxes.com, which was not being done before. Football and men's and women's basketball were the only sports that had a full-time broadcaster. So we started doing baseball games for the athletics department. Again, would travel as much as we could and do as many games as we could. Through that, I got the opportunity to, when Marist had a local television deal for its men's and women's basketball games, I was the sideline reporter as a junior um, on the TV broadcast of Marist Games. And then uh, my senior year, because of all that I've done with student media and whatnot, got the opportunity to call the, the official play-by-play -play for the women's team um, and do some work with the football team as well, who I now call play-by-play -play for as well. Um, and and that's, you know, that's how it happened, by taking advantage of just opportunities not that anyone gave to me, not that anyone said, hey, yeah, you show up, you go to this meeting, and then you, you put in this kind of work for this long, and then next year you'll get to do this, and then the year after you get to do this. No, we just saw that nothing was happening, figured out a way to make it happen, got to know the right people, and it led to some pretty cool opportunities. That's great. Well, you obviously have a passion for Marist College and athletics, um, but what, what about your other side of your uh, professional life? Uh, you did mention that you worked mm -hmm. for uh, uh, Dutchess County, um, you were uh, in the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you just recently accepted a new position. Kind of uh, tell us about your uh, professional life outside of sports. So yeah, I mean, broadcasting is my, my mm -hmm. hobby, my part-time job, you know, call it what you want, but yeah, it certainly doesn't pay the bills, I got a real job. <laughs> um, I was the Director of Communications for the Dutch County Regional Chamber of Commerce for four years, um, which got me involved in now, I mean, obviously, you know, you're part of the Marist community, and Marist is a part of a larger community, but this, you know, I got to meet so many people, whether it's in government or not-for-profit organizations, business leaders, people that really care, the people that make a difference here in, in you know, this place that we live. Um, and so that was great, and through that, the opportunity came about to go to Mid-Hudson Regional Hospital um, as their digital and brand strategist, which was a job that they created for me. Um, to essentially manage the brand of the hospital anywhere outside of the hospital's walls, right? So if it's on a brochure that people are going to be getting, or a mailing that people are going to be getting, or our website, our Facebook page, an event, whatever it is, kind of making sure that all that's in line with the hospital and its parent, which is Westchester Medical Center down in Valhalla, Howell, just kind of making sure that everything's similar, you know, in the same line. Um, it's not completely similar broadcasting, but it's not dissimilar either. I mean, a broadcast is just telling a story. It's communicating the story of a team, a game, a season, or whatever, yeah, as it unfolds. And that's sort of the same thing as any sort of marketing. If you've got a story that you want to get out, we're going to do it in X, Y, Z ways, and you figure out how to make it happen. That's great. Well, th thanks for showing um, us your side as a sports broadcaster and uh, a professional in the communications business. Just uh, what, one more uh, thing I'd like mm -hmm. to ask you. Um, it's the Maris May goal to showcase why and how uh, Maris has given opportunities to alumni. Mm -hmm. What makes you Maris May? Uh, it's, it's the people, honestly. Like, you look around, I'll take the athletic department for example, because it's one of the most intimately familiar. The senior associate AD is an alum, the sports information director is an alum, the assistant AD for marketing is an alum, uh, like four assistant football coaches are alums, three of the people on the women's basketball staff went to school there, our head baseball coach is an alum, both of our men's and women's lacrosse coaches went to school here. Uh, you know, people don't leave, and there's a reason for that. It's because when you're a part of the Marist community, you take advantage of what Marist has available to you. I, I hate when people say what they offer to you, because nobody offers you anything. It's what you take advantage of. Correct. The opportunities exist here for you to take advantage. And if you do that, and you, you, know, you become part of the culture, and you become part of the fabric, it, it's a hard place to leave. Um, and you know, I like being associated with the kinds of people that are here, and that feel similarly about this place and the work and everything as, as I do. And to me, you know, that's that's the biggest part is the community of people. It, less than the, the gorgeous buildings and you got the river. It's probably the most beautiful campus. I've been on a bunch of them. It's probably the most beautiful campus anywhere in the country. Maybe like Pepperdine and Hawaii are up there, but we're, we're on the list. 
and, and that stuff's great, and the education's first class, and it's liberal arts, you get your hand in everything, and the extracurriculars and all that exists, but it's, it's the quality of people, to me, um, that, that, that's what makes matters. Well, Jeff, I appreciate your time. Yeah, anytime, Thanks for being on the show. And tune in next time for the next episode of Marist Bay.